How you doing? How's it going? You ready for this? I think so. I'm ready. I'm ready. So, all right. We'll, we'll, guys we'll open it up to questions. Let's start with uh, James Krapia from the Oregonian. Ryan, good to see you again. Uh, we both hailed from the SEC previously, yep. so good to see you again from first time in a long time. Um, yep. I'll get the elephant out of the room, Brian. Uh, what was it like interviewing for a job amid a pandemic when you couldn't physically come out here for the interview? Uh, <laughs> moving moving cross country. And secondly, I, I wrote it up and I, I have the contract from SC. You left a lot on the table. And sure. I know they amended something with the buyout and everything, but you left something on the table. What went into the whole thought process, the interview process, et cetera? Sure. Well, I'll start with – um. You know, it is it's really good to be here, first of all. I just I gotta make sure that that um that everyone understands, man, how how excited I am to be here. I'll say this when it comes um to financially, um I'll say this, I've never taken a job because of money. I've never stayed at a job because of money. I've gotten opportunities that I passed up um that could have been that were a lot more lucrative in that in that aspect than they might than they might have been, um it, that they might have come to seem. Um, just like when I left the University of Georgia um, to turn down a bunch of big, big money opportunities to, to, to go to the University of South Carolina. So I, I've always looked for good situations more so than, than the money because I feel like if you, if you go to a good situation, then all that, the rest of the stuff would take care of itself. Um, now, there is some stuff that, that, that they, you know, got amended in a bunch of different ways. So, and, I, and, I kinda, and I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, so it's not, it, it wasn't anything crazy like, wow, <laughs> but, um, but definitely, man, you know, I, the thing that, that, that attracted me so much, uh, to University of Oregon was, um, just the, the opportunity here. Uh, like I said, I, I've never taken a job that I didn't feel like, um, that, there, there wasn't great opportunity at, at that, at that place. I mean, you, you look here. Um, it has it has all the resources, has the right people, has the right head coach, it has the right backing, um, and to do great things and just to be a part of that stuff, man, is really really exciting to me. Um, so it, it 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 is a different time when coach called, when coach reached out. I was uh, it was kind of different because uh, I, I you, you get job opportunities offered. Um, I, I've been really really blessed to have job opportunities op uh, offered to me before. Um, but during that time, it was kind of like, well, you know, how is this all going to work? And then so uh, just obviously, man, after talking with my family and things like that, we, we're like, hey, man, this is something that we need to something that we need to do. And so ultimately, you know, we did it and I'm here and, and, and excited to be here. Next question is uh, Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Hey, Brian, it's uh, nice to virtually meet you. Um, because of the pandemic, did you come out here sight unseen or did you, had you visited out here before and and I guess what's it like coming you know spending your whole life in the south and the SEC and then coming out to the Pacific Northwest to to join the staff sure uh well to answer your question I'd only been to the state of Oregon one other time in my life um I had come I was at the University of Georgia at the time and uh, I came out here with the offensive staff to actually visit with the visit with Oregon State. Coach Rick and Mike Riley um, were really good buddies, um, so we had came out and we had visited with them staff with, with their staff offensively about a couple different things that we were doing over there at the University of Georgia. Uh, so I came back and that was I want to say in 2007 was my only other time that I had ever been here. But I had got a chance to go and go to the Nike campus and uh the night the nike store and all that other stuff i got a chance to experience a, a couple different things in that regard in that short trip um and the the other part uh just just as far as um you know just the the, the other part of just being able to come out here and, and able to see you like i said man you got a chance to see the backing that this university has um just as soon as you fly into the portland airport i mean it's it's kind of like wow um but as far as being able to come out here from being in the Southeast and in, in the SEC, it's not truly different. I tell you, it's a people business um, and it's all about people and it's about the players. At the end of the day, um, if it weren't for the players, none of us coaches would have jobs. So, I mean, I think that's kind of how, how I take, that's kind of how I take it. And, and I just entrench myself and kind of making sure that we're doing everything we can do to make sure that those guys are, are successful both on and off the field. And that's kind of, that, that makes it real easy. Um, so when it comes to that, when it comes to recruiting, it's all about people and about relationships and, and you're going to have to build those wherever you go. 
Next question, Eric Scopel from 247 Sports. Nice to meet you, Brian, and welcome to Eugene. Good to meet you. Thanks. <laughs> well, I guess we'll do it in person at some point here. Um, <laughs> philosophically speaking, I guess, how do, how do, your, how, how do your, your beliefs at the position, I guess, as the passing coordinator align with, with Joe Moorhead? Sure. Uh, and, and then kind of what are some of the pillars of, of what you like um, out of your receivers? Sure. Um, when it comes to philosophically, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to lean a lot on what, what Joe's real, what Joe feels real comfortable with. At the end of the day, he's the coordinator. He's the guy that's going to have to call the plays. So it's going to have to be, he's going, it's going to have to be stuff that he has real strong convictions in. Um, being in that seat, there's, there's a couple different things. It's some it's really good to get input and it's sometimes it's really bad. You know, it's really bad to get too much input also. And so uh, I just, you know, my job is to make sure that, that we're doing everything can, that, that we can do at, you know, personally um, with my position, with my players to, to support his vision of, of what the offense needs to be and, and, and focus on that. And so, uh, cause that, cause ultimately that's my job more so than, than, than to coordinate anything at all. So it's really going to be what he feels really comfortable in. Uh, he asked me about, about certain things and then we'll, we'll kind of go back and forth on some different things. But other than that, it's going to be what he feels real strongly about doing and, um, and, and, and we'll, we'll move on from there. And so, um, but what I look for in receivers is, um, Quite frankly, I like guys that can catch the ball. As <laughs> is, 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 is silly as that might sound, as plain as that might sound, um, you like guys that can naturally catch the football. And then um, you, you like guys that can create plays after they have the ball in their hand. I mean, um, it's really, really hard in, now, in nowadays football to go seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 plays in a row to have to execute that to go to, to put together drives. You want guys that can create explosive plays on their own. So um, that's, I mean, that, that's what we focus on. We focus on that. We focus on um, turning big plays, but whether it be in the run game or in the pass game, in the touchdowns. And that's, that, I mean, that, that's our goal. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we know we're, we're still, a, we're, we still have work to do. Uh, and, and right now, man, the only thing we have in common with the guys that we play against is time. And so we want to make sure that we're maximizing ours. Next question, Kevin Wade from 247 Sports. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Oregon. Um, Thank you. You are, you are a former 247 National Recruit of the Year. So is Coach Cristobal. Uh, first off, what's it like working on staff with a, a bunch of other recruiters that recruiting so focused? And then secondly, coming to this job in the middle of the pandemic, what's it been like recruiting when you haven't been able to meet with any prospects? I know you can't say any prospects specifically, but what's that been like to, to recruit when you had just gotten to a place? Sure, sure. Well, um, it's always great to, to be on a staff with like-minded people, you know, and uh, I've been fortunate to be on, you know, other really good staffs also. And so, I mean, you know, and, and, and every staff that you're on, I think every staff in college football uh, recruiting is definitely or should be a, a main focus. Um, Cause at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, man, that that's, that's kind of the lifeblood of every program is, is, is the recruits that it brings in. And so obviously, you know, ha having, you know, coach Cristobal have, have having done it at a high level, um, shows that he gets it. I mean, he, he gets it and he understands it. Um, but you know, it is, I mean, it's, it's just nowadays in society, man, you know, it's just, it's just what the world has come to in the sense of, of how you meet people and how, and how you, and, and how you socialize, you know I mean? With, with, when it comes to zoom, when it comes to FaceTime and all the, all the technology that you have available, you just have to use that as much as you can to expose yourself to as many, the many other, other recruits and their family members and everything like that to get real comfortable with each other when it comes to that. But um, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, recruiting is about relationships. It's about uh, gaining the trust of, of people and, and they know that you're going to do everything you can do within your power to make them the best that they can be both on and off the field, you know, and at the end of the day, that's, that, that's that that's what you're trying to show people so um just doing a good job of just trying to make sure that that every every opportunity that i get that that's what i'm doing too next question is from julian Mininson from uh, kzi hey brian good to meet you welcome to oregon um i just wanted to ask what is it about the, this wide receiver group so far that's impressed you i i know it's still very very early in camp but what, what is it about them that's impressed you? And if there's somebody that's stuck out to you so far um, that's uh, really caught your eye, maybe that you didn't expect or, or that's impressed you just in these early moments of camp? Sure, sure. Um, well, you know, the, the, 
I'll say this. What would have been real positive with, with our guys is you see the progression in every practice that we've taken. Um, they, they, they are doing a really good job of taking uh, stuff from the meeting room out to practice and applying it. And so, uh, you know, I'm a guy that I'm very, very demanding um, very, in a lot of different ways uh, on everything from all. I mean, there is no detail too small um, that, that I won't be demanding about. Um, and those guys are doing a great job of, of allowing me to push them to make, to make sure that they reach all of those expectations that we have. I told them, man, we have really high expectations in our room, um, and they're not lowering. And so, I mean, those guys are working their tails off, man, to try to make sure that they're going out there and improving every single day. So that right there has probably been the, the biggest um, thing that I've been impressed with right now with those guys. Um, and they know um, that every day is opportunity. And every day is opportunity. But I've been really, really pleased with the guys that that really, you know, the same guys that have played a bunch of ball, the Johnny Johnsons, Jalen Reds, Micah Pittmans. Um, they're doing a real, you know, they're doing a really good job. Uh, you know, I've been real impressed with Chris Hudson up to uh, up to this point. Um, he still has a long way to go and a lot to learn, but um, but he's very, very willing. And I've been I've been pleased with him. Um, but overall, the overall, you know, overall group has done real well and, and those guys have, have worked their tails off every single day to improve and you know like I said we're still a long way away but um those guys are working to get there next question comes from Dylan uh, Mickenin from NBC Sports Northwest hey coach um I know that you've coached in the SEC for a while before coming to Oregon and then Mario Cristobal also coached in the SEC and Alabama before coming to Oregon and uh, some like pundits in the last few years have said that Cristobal has brought like an SEC mentality sure. to uh, Oregon. Can you talk about the this, this similarities between Oregon's current program and the previous programs that you've been at? Sure. Uh, you know, just as far as mentality wise, uh, it's kind of all I've known uh, is, is what we do here. So it is, like I said, it, I guess if you understand how similar those are, then, um, then, then that's something. But that's that, that's really all I've known. Just, just the the way to attack every single day. Um, the attention to detail and everything that we're doing. The high standard and every and everything and the standard that we want that we will hold everybody to in the building. Um, not not just I mean not just those guys, but everybody understand that they have a, they have an important part to to our success here. Everybody does. And so, um, I mean, like I said, that's kind of all I know. Um, he's been he's been exposed. Coach Cristobal has been exposed to some really, really, really good coaches. And and all, and all of us coaches are really just a culmination of the people who brought us up in this business. And uh, he's had really good people that bring him up in the business. And so, uh, I mean, I've been really, really fortunate to be around him and learn, pick up stuff in my short time here and, and really plan on doing so, to, you know, as long as I'm here. Next question comes from James Carpillo with the Oregonian. Right, just wanted to go over uh, a bit of personnel. Uh, you went over certainly the guys we're most familiar with and we've seen the most of, but uh, elsewhere on the depth chart, um, whether it's uh, Waters and Wilhoyd or Delgado, uh, Crocker, wh who's at X, who's at Z, who's at F, who's where, where's the kind of things filling out lower on the depth yeah, chart? Sure, sure. I, you know, you know, those guys have really done a good job of having to learn them all, to be honest with you. Um, it's, and, and this is what I mean when I say that. Um, what I, what, what I would like, what, what, what we want to do is make sure that we always have the best that we can possibly have on the field at, at, at any given time. So it's not so much as, hey, man, second team guys right here, but, hey, man, this guy's down, his chin strap buckle broke. All right, now this guy needs to go in at H. This guy needs to go in at X. This guy needs to go in at Z. So those guys need have to do a good job of really just learning all of the concepts, if that makes sense. Um, so all of those guys are repping at a, at a bunch of different positions. That's, I guess, I mean, that, that, I guess that's the answer um, that, that I'm trying to get to. But um, at the end of the day, um, the, Josh Delgado has done a great job um, picking up everything, learning all those different positions. He he allows he he allows us to go in there and go in go in the game and play, uh, and be able to function at a high level at, at a number of different spots. Um, Lance and and both Jr. Both those guys are coming along. You know they they missed a lot of time last year with injuries and things like that. So in, in essence, this is really those guys' first full off season, first full camp so far. Um, so as long as they keep doing that, they, they'll keep continuing to progress. But, but like I said, I mean, those guys missed a lot of time, you know, and uh, not, you know, and so just making sure that we're trying to bring those guys up to speed too. Um, you got Devin, 
um, who's done a good job of, of coming in and making sure that, you know what I mean, that, and coming in and being able to provide a couple of different things for us. He still um, ha, ha, has, has a ways to go, but, uh, but he's, he's definitely a really, really, really talented guy uh, and really eager to kind of go out there and, and do some good things. So I uh, just got to make sure that we're bringing him up to speed too. And he, and he's had a good camp also. So, uh, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's just day four. I mean, we, we still got a long way to go. Um, so it's really hard to say, hey, man, you know, this guy is really a cut above or a cut below anybody. I mean, we've just only really been out there four days. And, um, I mean, tomorrow will be day five. Next question is from Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Hey, I was curious, as the passing game coordinator, obviously you're going to have some inputs on the quarterback play. Uh, what have you seen? Obviously you said not a lot of opportunity in practice, maybe – practice but also just the kind of the guys they are off the field as well how they kind of compose themselves sure I you know as far as the quarterback room again those guys that that decision really is going to be up to Joe and coach crystal ball um obviously man he'll get input and everything else from from myself and the rest of the offensive staff but um you know at the end of the day those guys man both Tyler a b yeah, I mean, all those guys, man, they, they've done a good job of, of, of grasping everything, both, you know, on the field, how they need to be, be off the field. And, you know, the guys, uh, the guy, I mean, they're one of the guys, which is really, really good to see, too. I mean, the, the team enjoys those guys. Um, they come in and then they, you know, they, they're doing, getting stuff in early with the guys. They're getting stuff after practice with the guys, which is really, really good to see. Um, so, I mean, all those guys, man, are putting themselves in position to go out there and, and, and try to compete and, and give us the best chance to win games. And so, um, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm pretty sure down the road there'll be some decisions made and all that other stuff. But, you know, I've only been here for four practices with those guys, you know. And so, I mean, you know, as far as being able to see them live, that's really all I could tell you, <laughs> you know what I mean, other than other than the film that I watched from from, from spring practice. Next question, uh, back to James Krapia from the Oregonian. Brian, you're obviously renowned as a re recruiter, and I, I watched, uh, I think, every one of those running backs that you brought to Georgia at the time. Um, <laughs> how do you go about getting those guys out of that region, whether it be Georgia specifically, Memphis, the Southeast in general? Obviously, the, the staff has done it. Uh, the past couple of years on, you know, select selectively. Um, but how do you go about doing that and selling your brand uh, to kids who obviously, you know, through Georgia, where the in-state schools are obviously a big appeal and the region is a big appeal. And how much does an organization like the MCA of Georgia play a role? Because I know that Mario's uh, obviously done a lot. And I know you've done a lot uh, with them this past year, but you've done a lot for years with them. Sure. Um, you know, to answer your question, I think, you know, it really goes down to, Kind of what I said before, I mean, it goes down to just building relationships with those guys. Um, at the end of the day, um, those guys got to know they got to trust them, their family. They got to know they got to trust that, man, that we have those kids' best interests at heart. You know what I mean? Wherever they're from. You know what I mean? From the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, those guys got to know, man, that they're going to come here and they're, and they're going to be looked after. And at the end of the day, it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. It's going to be some hard days that happen in college, too. I mean, not just in college. It's just called growing up and getting older, right? You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you're going to want people – Hey, you're going to want people in your corner that you know you can go in there and shut the door and say, hey, coach, look, I'm struggling right now. And then you, I mean, and you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to be taken care of, you know what I mean? In every aspect, man. So, at, uh, so when it comes to being able to recruit, it's really, like I said, man, just about building relationships and, and, and doing those. Obviously, man, over there in that region, that's that's all I that's that's all I've kind of come up or I've come, I've kind of come up over there and have a bunch of really good relationships already built up with with a lot of people. You know, and so I mean it does make it easier to go over there and say, Hey, you know, and have people vouch for you. Hey man, I know this guy right here. He, you know, he's a good guy. This guy right here, he's, you know, I mean, it, it, he's a guy that we can trust in a bunch of different assets and in, the, in a bunch of different aspects of life. So, um, and I think, you know, like I said, man, that was another thing that, that brought me out here is being able to go and, and expand and get, and get connections out here to be able to do the exact same thing, you know, out here on this coast as well. So, um, and, and it's been really, really good, man. The people out here have been really receptive. Um, all I can be is me. And so, and so, um, you know, when it comes to that, man, and it comes to, you know, the connections and everything else that we have over there on, on, on the East Coast, I think that that's what helps, gives us a bonus. But at the end of the day, man, we got to do a great job of recruiting in our footprint up here, too. 
And so, I mean, and, and the good thing about the University of Oregon, it truly is a national brand. I mean, you can go anywhere and then people know and recognize, hey, man, that's the Oregon O. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you have, you, you have that going for you just with any coach that, that works here. Last question goes to Max Torres from Scoop Duck. Hey, Coach. Great to meet you. Um, we, we've seen this trend in college football over the past couple of years of uh, bigger body wide receivers really being, you know, what kind of elevates these programs. You get here to Oregon, you kind of have a mixture of body types with, you know, Micah, Jalen, uh, Devin Williams. Uh, how do you as a passing coordinator and as a receivers coach go about kind of finding that right balance between size and speed? Sure. Uh, I'll say this. Um, when you look at the best guys, no matter what size they are, they're guys that can get open and create explosive plays, right? And so however size that that comes in um, is what size it comes in. I mean, because, I mean, you look at um, the guys over there at LSU, you know, last year. I mean, those guys over there, they, I mean, they, they did have some size on them and everything else. You know, now you look at uh other other receivers man that might be leading the country right now man their 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 size i mean the size range really 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 varies you know what i mean it's really really big so um at the end of the day you want guys that that can beat that can consistently beat man to man and that can and that can consistently give you big plays and opportunities to score when they have the football in their hand and so whatever size that that comes in um then I'm fine with it, okay? So I'm, I'm not married to kind of one size or another. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm married to more, more so of the traits that you need to go out there and be able to play well. And, um, and right now, man, if it comes in a bigger body guy, then I'm fine with it. If it comes in a smaller guy, I'm fine with it also. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys.